Again, I want to thank you for being here tonight. Es vēlos jums pateikties, ka jūs esat šeit šovakar. For all of you that are here tonight. Un visi, kas jūs šeit esat šovakar. And all of you that are listening by the radio. Un visi, kas klausieties mūsu radio. We welcome you. Mēs jūs. Uh, Amen. Laipni lūdzam. <laughs> we are looking at the book of Revelation. Mēs skatāmies Jāņa atklāšanas grāmatu. For those of you that have ears. Tiem, kam ir ausis. And eyes, un tiem, kam ir acis, you're going to see something tonight. Jūs kaut ko šovakar ieraudzīsim. Those of you that are with us tonight have a picture in your hand. Tie, kas šovakar ir kopā ar mums, jums rokās ir attēls. This is the capital of the EU. Tā ir Eiropas Savienības galvas pilsēta. I'm holding pilsēta. a picture of your big building down there in Brussels. Es, uh, man rokās ir Briselē liels ēks attēls. <laughs> Out in front of Brussels is this little, this bottom picture. Un tur ir... Uh, see that picture, the bottom picture? What the bottom picture? There's an upper picture and a bottom picture. That bottom picture is Brussels. Right out in front of it, this is the, the EU headquarters, the White House. In America we have a White House. This is your White House. You have a beast carrying a woman. You have a beast jums carrying ir, a woman. Jums ir, uh, briesmonis, kas Do you see that? Right out in the front of your capital. Jūsu, uh, pašā you know how every state in the EU, uh, they have their own little state. But you together are one big union. Savienība. It's called the European Union. Un tā tie sauk, tā tiek sauk, tā okay. Eiropas Savienība. If you'll notice up above that picture, un, ja ievēros, tad augšā šim attēlam, you'll see a two-lat coin. Tad tur ir divu eiro monēta. You see that two-lat coin? That is a currency in the EU. Tā ir Eiropas Savienības naudas vienība. One of the things about coins, un viena no lietām par is that each country can make a coin that they want to show themselves. And you'll notice on the right-hand picture, you'll see that same beast carrying that same woman. And then there's a story on the side of it. This is not my story, this is a story right out of the EU coin thing. Tas nav mans tās, tas ir vienkārši uz naudas vienības ir šis tās. There was a god by the name of Zeus. Bija dievs vārdā Zeus. There was a god by the name of Zeus in the Greek Empire. Grieķu impērijā bija dievs vārdā Zeus. And there was a woman that he was chasing after. Un bija kāda sievieta, kurai viņš zinās pakaļ. Her name was Europa. Un viņas vārds bija Eiropa. Europa was her name. And he snatched her and took her away. <laughs> and that became the mythological symbol for Europe, where you live today. This happens to be a Greek coin, a Greek euro. I just want to know you, show you a picture of it. Inside of that building is a great big mural. Uh, big, big painting. Šajā, um, a big painting on the inside of the building, very similar to that. Glezna, kas ir ļoti šim te. Amen? Are you looking at me? Vai jūs mani, uz mani Do you see the animal? Vai jūs šo Do you see the woman on the animal? Vai jūs uz that šo is dzīvnieku? the symbol for Europe. Tas ir that is the part of what you have connected your country to. Tā ir daļa tam, kam jūs, ar ko jūsu valsts ir saistīta. You are a part of that. Jūs esat daļa no tā. You're going to see that person. Un jūs redzēsiet šo personu. Spoken of in the book of Revelation. Ka par šo personu tiek runāts atklāsmes grāmatā. You're going to see her. Jūs viņu redzēsiet. You're going to see that beast. Jūs redzēsiet šo zvēru. Spoken of. Par kuru tiek runāts. Almost 2,000 years ago. Par kuru tika runāts gandrīz 2,000 gadus atpakaļ. Where you live. God said something was going to happen. But before we get there, I want you to notice in the 11th chapter. We were going through the reading about measure the temple. Measure the temple, measure the courtyard. 
tika mērīts templis un um, priekšpagalms. Measure pagalms. the things that, that God was wanting to bring judgment on. Uh, tika mērīts tās lietas, par kurām uh, nāca pēc tam Dievs Now, jūts. notice down here Ievēro. in the second verse. Otrajā pantā. And the outer court, the one outside of the sanctuary, leave it out, do not measure it. Bet pagalmu templi ārpusē atstāja bez ievērības, ir citiem vārdiem sakot, nemēri to. Why? Kāpēc? Because it was given to the nations. Jo tas tika adots uh, tautām. Now we're not just talking about France and Germany. Mēs šeit nerunājam tikai par Franciju un Vāciju. But we are talking about nations. Bet mēs šeit runājam par tautām. Who will control. Kas kontrolēs. Israel. Izraelu. And this city called Jerusalem. Un pilsēta, kas saucās Jeruzālēma. You notice it says the holy city will be tread underfoot for 42 months. Tur ir teicis, ka tie bradās svēto pilsētu 42 mēnešus. When the Bible talks about bad things about Jerusalem. Un tad, kad Bībelē tiek runāts par sliktām lietām, kas notiks Jeruzālēmē. Or you can say it this way. Vai arī varētu teikt šādi. When God predicts the future and those who are persecuting Israel. Tad, kad Dievs pārēdz nākotni un ka Izraels tiks um, vajāts. He talks about it in terms of months. Tad viņš runā mēn, par mēnešiem. When he talks about Israel being persecuted, tad, kad viņš runā par to, ka Izraels tiks um, vajāts, he talks about it in days. Tad viņš par to runā dienās. That way, if you see, you'll notice there's a consistency there. Tu ieraudzīs, ka tas tā pastāvīgi ir. Now, notice this statement. Un ievēro apgalvojumu. In the third verse. Trešajā pantā. And I will give to my two witnesses. Un es likšu diviem maniem lieciniekiem. And they will prophesy. Viņi pravietīs. One thousand two hundred. Tūkstoši divi simti. In sixty days. Sešdesmit dienas. Notice, forty two months. Ievēro četrdesmit divi mēneši. One thousand or two thousand six hundred. You know, two thousand, that was day. Two thousand six hundred days. Un tūkstoši divi simti sešdesmit dienas. Notice months and days. Ievēro mēneši un dienas. Notice when you talk about the two witnesses. Ievēro, mēs runājam arī par diviem lieciniekiem. It's a good thing. Tā ir laba lieta. God is doing something with the two witnesses. Dievs kaut ko dar ar šiem diviem lieciniekiem. He talks about it being days. Un par to viņš runā dienās. Up here Israel is being tread underfoot for 42 months. Un tur iepriekš ir tas, kad tie bradās svēto pilsētu 42 mēnešus. That's a bad thing. Tā ir slikta lieta. Now notice the fourth verse. Ievēro ceturto pantu. Notice what it says, talking about these two witnesses. Un tur tiek runāts par šiem diviem lieciniekiem. These are the two olive trees. Viņi ir divi eļļas koki. The two lampstands. Un divi gaismekļi. The ones having been stood before the Lord of the earth and stand. Kas stāv zemes kunga priekšā. Now I want you to turn back the Old Testament real quick. We're going to see them. Es gribu, lai jūs ļoti ātri uzšķirt veco darību. Turn back to Zechariah. Atversim vaļā Zachariju. Zechariah. Zachariju. You'll find Malachi tu, and you'll find Zachariah right next to each other. Um, Malachijs un Zacharijs grāmatas vien otrai blakā. You will see Zachariah tu redzēsi Zacharijs grāmatā. And you'll see Malachi right next to each other. <laughs> Jā, cikot, Zacharijs grāmatā atrodas blakās Malachijs. Notice in Zechariah 4th chapter. Zacharijs grāmatas 4. nodaļa. There's a statement here. Un tur ir apgalvojums. This is prophesied. Tas tika pravietot. This will happen. Tas notiks. Fourth chapter. Ceturtā nodaļa. First verse. Pirmais pants. And the angel that talked with me came again. Un eņģels, kas ar mani runāja, atgriezās atkal. And he woke atkal. me up. Un modināja mani. As a man that is wakened out of a sleep. Kā modina cilvēka no miega. And he said to me. Un jautāja mani. What do you see? Ko tu redzi? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of gold. Es atbildēju, es redzu tur lukturi no tīra zelta. With a bowl on top of it. Ar virsu uzlikta eļa straucīja. And there's seven lamps thereon. Lukturim ir septiņi eļas lukturīši. And seven pipes to the lamp stand, to the seven lamps. Un tiem kopā ir septiņi ar trauciņu saistītas eļas caurulītes. On top of it. Third verse. Trešais pants. The two olive trees by it. Un divi eļas koki līdzās. And two olive trees by it. Un divi eļas koki līdzās. One upon the right side of the bowl. Viens pa labi. And one upon the left side. Otrs pa kreisi no luktura. So I asked, so I answered, and I spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying. Un es turpināju un jautāju eņģelim, kas ar mani runāja. What are these two, my lord? Kāda tam visam nozīme, mans kungs? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said to me. Tad eņģels, kas ar mani runāja, dev man šādu atbildi. Don't you know who these two are? 
Tātad tu tiešām nezini, kāda tam nozīme. And I said, no, I don't know, Lord. Es sacīju, nē, mans kungs. Now, notice down here with me. Un ievēro tālāk. He sees the same thing again, 11th verse. 11. pantā viņš atkārēs to pašu. Then I answered. Tad es griezos pie viņa ar jautājumu. And said to him, what are these two olive trees, the one on the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side? Kāda nozīme ir tiem diviem eļļas kokiem, kas pa labi un pa kreisi no luktura? And answered again. Es jautāju otreiz. And I said to him, what are these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Now we already know what the candlestick is, don't we? It is an instrument full of oil. It's an instrument full of oil kas ir instruments, kas ir pilns that burns. Eļļa, kas deg. And it says that the oil un tur ir teica, ka eļļa comes out of this lamp nāk ārā no šī and luktura, goes into these two. Un ieiet šie uz divos. This was hundreds of years before this ever took place. Tas ir vispār simtiem gadu atpakaļ pirms vispār tas notiks. Can you understand? This is way, way a long time tas ago. Tas ir ļoti, ļoti sen. And then the 13th verse says, un tad 13. pāns, And he answered me and said, Don't you know what these be? Tad viņš man atbildēja, vai tu tiešām nezini, kāda tiem nozīme? And I said, no, Lord. Es savu kārt atbildēju, ne, Then he said to me, tad viņš man sacīja, These are the two anointed ones tie ir tie abi svaidītie, that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Kas kalpo visas pasaules kungam. Two anointed ones. Divi svaidītie. Now, that's what this is saying in the book of Revelation. Tas ir tas, kas arī atklāsimies grāmatā ir teikts. These two witnesses. Šie divi liecinieki. They will supernaturally speak for God. Viņi pārdabriski runāja no Dieva. 260 days. 1260 dienas. Notice they're wearing sackcloth. Ievēro viņi um, valkā. It's a clothing that people Mainsus. wore to mourn. Tā, tie bija, tas bija apģērbs, ko cilvēki valkā, kad viņi sēroja. For example, if you went to a funeral, piemēram, ja tu dotos uz bērēm, what color would you see there? kādu krāstu tu redzētu? Nouns. This Melma. normally you would find black clothing, right? Parasti tu tur ieraudzītu melnu apģērbu. This is the clothing they wore when they mourned. Šis bija tas apģērbs, ko viņi valkāja, kad viņi uh, sēroja. Now this is a prophet. Tas ir pravietis. These are two prophets. Tie ir divi pravieši. They're two anointed ones. Divi svaidītie. Can you hear that? Vai jūs to dzirdat? And they are dressed because they're going to mourn. Un viņi ir apģērbušies atbilstoši tam, jo viņi sēros. Then in the fourth verse it says. Un ceturtajā pantā ir teikts. These are the two olive trees. Viņi ir divi eļļas koki. And the two lampstands. Un divi gaismeti. The ones having stood before the Lord of the earth. Kas stāv zemes kunga priekšā. They are the same two. Viņi ir tie paši divi. They are the same two that are spoken of in Zechariah. Tie ir tie paši divi, par kuriem tiek runāts Cacharīs grāmatā. In the tribulation bēdu laikā will come two men, būs divi vīri, two men that are living and alive, divi vīri, kas ir dzīvi, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, un viņi pravietos 1,260 dienas, and they will mourn un viņi sēros on behalf of Israel, Izraela, labā vai Izraela dēļ. Notice down here, in the seventh verse. And whenever they might finish their testimony. Notice the beast. Now we're talking about a wild animal. I'm not sure what your Latvian Bible says. There's a difference between four living creatures ir atšķirības starp četrām dzīvajām būtnēm in wild animals un mežonīgiem dzīvniekiem these are symbolized by a wild looking animal šis zvērs viņš simbolizē tādu mežonīgu paskatu dzīvnieku now the book of revelation is a book of symbols un atklāsimis grāmatā tā ir uh, simbolu grāmata notice and whenever they might finish their testimony kad viņi būs beiguši savu liecināšanu these two prophets are testifying to Israel. Šie divi uh, liecina Izraelam. And it says the beast, the one coming up out of the abyss, will make war with them, these two people. 
Un tālāk teikt, tas vērs, kas nāk ārā no bezdebiņa, sāks ar viņiem karu. And we'll overcome them. Viņš uzvarēs. And we'll kill them. Un viņus nokaus. And their fallen bodies will lie on the street of that great city, which is being called spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Un viņu līķi mētāsies ielās <coughs> lielajā pilsētā, kuras vārds garīgi ir Sodoma un Ēģipte. Where also their Lord was crucified. Pilsētā, kur tika sists krustā viņu kungs. Well, we know where Jesus was crucified. Mēs zinām, kur Jēzus tika piesists krustā. This is Jerusalem. Tā ir Jeruzāleme. These two prophets. Šie divi pravieši. Will walk up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Staigās pa Jeruzāleme sielām. For 1260 days. 1260 dienas. Half of the tribulation. Pusi no bēdu laika. So half of the tribulation. Pusi no bēdu laika. Israel will be protected. Izraels tiks aizsargāts. The last half. Un to pēdējo pusi laika. These two guys get killed. Šī divi tiks nogalināti. So they are physical human beings. Tātad viņi ir fiziskas būtnes. Because whenever their testimony is finished, the beast, the one coming up out of the abyss, will make war with them, overcome them and kill them. Tad, kad viņi būs beiguši liecināt, tad zvērs iznāks ārā no bezdepeņa un sāks karu. These are two human beings who stand in heaven right now. There's only two human beings who were taken out of the earth. Moses is not one of them. Enoch was taken. And Elijah was taken. They never saw death. Viņi nekad neredzēja nāvi. They live in that glory right now. Viņi dzīvo tajā godībā šobrīd. You see, in the glory you don't age. Redzi, godībā tu nenoveco. You're suspended, your system doesn't function. Tava, nu, visa sistēma nedarbojās. They've been up there for almost 4,000 years now. Viņi tur augšā ir jau aptuveni 4,000 gadus. They're just up there. Viņi tur vienkārši augšā ir. But they're coming back. Bet viņi nāks atpakaļ. God's going to send them back. Dievs viņus sūtīs atpakaļ. And you'll see they're walking in the streets of Jerusalem. Un tu redzi, ka viņi staigā pa Jeruzālam sielām. Sodom is a symbol of wickedness. Sodoma ir ļaunuma simbols. And Egypt is a symbol of bondage. Un Ēģipte ir vērdzības simbols. Now you see that. Amen? Tu redzi. Amen. Now, I want you to go over with me to the book of Daniel. Atversim Daniela grāmatu. I have to lay down a little bit of groundwork here. Man ir jāieliek tāds neliels pamats. If we're going to understand this statement about these beasts. Lai mēs saprastu šos apgalvojumus par zvēru. Okay. Labi. In the book of Revelation. Atklāsimies grāmatā. We have a lot of personifications. Mums ir ļoti daudz personifikāciju. A tree. Koks. That acts like a man. Kas rīkojas kā cilvēks. It's a personification. Tā ir personifikācija. There are lots of these in the book of Revelation. Un tās ir ļoti daudz atklāsimies grāmatā. A man is not a wild creature. Cilvēks nav mežonīgs radījums. Can you understand that? Vai jūs to saprotat? It is a personification. Tā ir personifikācija. But it is one well documented in the Old Testament. Bet tas ir ļoti labi nodokumentēts vecajā derībā. That's what we have to understand. Tas ir tas, kas mums ir jāsaprot. When we talk about the beast. Tad, kad mēs runājam par zvēru. We are talking about an empire or a group of nations. Tad mēs runājam par impēriju, jeb par nāciju grupu. When you personify a nation. Tad, kad tu personificē nāciju. You may use it as a person. Tu vari to lietot kā personu. Or there may be one person in that empire. Un tajā impērijā var būt viena persona, that you're trying to emphasize. Kuru tu centies uzsvērt. Can you understand that? Vai jūs to saprotat? There has never been nekad nav bijis two people divu cilvēku who have come out of hell. Kas būtu iznākuši no elles. Only one. Tikai viens. The Bible says he Bible ir teica, who knew no sin. Viņš, kurš grēku nepazina. We know who that is. That's Mēs Jesus. Zinam, kurš tas ir, tas ir Jēzus. He was made sin. Viņš tika darīts par grēku. And when he left his body, un tad, kad viņš atstāja savu miesu, he left in the state of someone who was made sin. Viņš, he did not die as a righteous man. Viņš nenomira kā taisnots vīrs. He died as we would have died. Viņš nomira tā, kā mēs būtu nomirši. So Jesus descended into hell. Jēzus tika nosūtīts L.A. And for three days and three nights was in hell. Viņš bija trīs dienas un trīs naktis L.A. Well, God raised Jesus from hell. Dievs uzcēl Jēzu no L.A.s. Can you understand that? Vai jūs to saprotat? God raised Jesus from hell. 
Dievs uzcēl Jēzus no mēles. Tikai viena persona has ever come out of hell. The other terms for hell are the abyss. Un citi apzīmē melle ir bezdebens. There's called the abyss. Okay. So you're going to see statements about him, the beast, tu redzēsi apgalmojums par viņu, par zvēru, who ascends out of the abyss. No But we have to understand, it's a personification. Bet mums tas ir jāsaprot, ka tā ir personifikācija. Yes, there is a truth. He is a man. Jā, tur ir patiesība, jā, viņš ir yes, cilvēks. Yes, he is also a nation. Jā, un tāpat laikā viņš arī arī nācija. But I want you to look first in, in Daniel's book. Es gribu sākumā paskatīties Daniela grāmatu. This is the seventh chapter. Septītā nodaļa. Notice down here in the first verse. Ievēro pirmo pantu. In the first year of Bashar, Bashar, Bābeles ķēniņa Belz sacāra pirmajā valdīšanas gadā. The king of Babylon. Bābeles ķēniņa. Daniel had a dream of visions. Daniels redzēja sapni. On his head when he was sleeping. Un viņš guļot gultā, viņš sapnī redzēja dažādas parādības. And he wrote down the dream. Viņš aprakstīja sapni. He told the sum of it, the basic information of it. Un atstāstī tā galvi no satura, jeb to pamata informāciju. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my night vision. Un Daniels sacīja, es naktī parādībā redzēju. And behold, the four winds of heaven were striving upon the great sea. Un lūk, četri debes veidi rāzās cits citam pretī pa plašo pasaules jūru. A sea. Jūru. A sea is a symbol of Gentile nations. Jūra, tas ir pagāna nāciju simbols. The earth is a symbol of Israel. Zeme ir Izraela simbols. So these are the sea or the Gentile nations. Jūra, tātad tā ir pagāna, tās ir pagāna nācijas. What did he see? Ko viņš redzēja? And four great beasts. Third verse. No jūras tad izkāpa četri milzīgi zvēri. And four great beasts came up out of the sea. No jūras tad izkāpa četri milzīgi zvēri. Different from one another. Kas visi bija dažādi pēc savu izskatu. Now I want you to look very carefully. Es gribu, lai jūs skatāties ļoti uzmanīgi. He is talking about wild animals. Viņš runā par mežonīgiem zvēriem. And these wild animals symbolize nations. Un šie mežonīgie zvēri simbolizē nācijas. The first was like a lion. Pirmais izskatījās kā lauva. And had eagle's wings. Bet tam bija ērļas pārni. If you ever went back and look in Persia or Babylon. Ja tu, nu, paskatītos atpakaļ, tad Babilonijā un Persijā. You will see a symbol of a lion with wings on its back. Tad tu redzēsi, ka tur ir simbols lauva, kurai ir spārni. It is the symbol of Babylon. Tā ir Babilonijas, tas ir Babilonijas simbols. It says, and I beheld till the wings thereof were blocked off. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on the feet like a man. Es aplūkoju to tiekāms tam izrāvas pānus, un tas piecēlās no zemes, nostājās kā cilvēks uz savām kājām. And a man's heart was given to it. Un tam deva cilvēka sirdi. Now you see a personification again. Tagad tu atkal redzi personifikāciju. An animal. Dzīvnieks. And a man, both in the same thought. Dzīvnieks un cilvēks abi divi vienautē pašā domā. Vai jūs to redzat? Notice there is two things there. Redzat, tur ir divas lietas. The animal symbolizes a nation. Dzīvnieks simbolizē nāciju. The man symbolizes the leader of that nation. Un šis cilvēks simbolizē šīs nācijas līderi, vadītāju. If you're going to understand the book of Revelation, you're going to have to understand. Ja tu gribi saprast atklāsimus grāmatu, tev šis ir jāsaprot. Fifth verse. Piektais pārs. And behold another beast. Un tur bija vēl otrs zvērs. A second one like a bear. Tas izskatījās kā lācis. And it raised up itself on one side. Viņš bija piecēlēs tikai ar vienu savu pusi. And it had three ribs in its mouth. Tam bija zobos trīs ribas. Between its teeth. Zobos trīs ribas. Well, the symbol of a bear. Zvēra simbols. Is the two nations, Media and Persia. Tās ir divas nācijas, Medija un Persija. And you'll notice he says he had ribs in its mouth. Un tu ievēroji, ka viņam zobos ir trīs ribas. Persia defeated three countries. Persija bija sakāvusi trīs valstis. Notice again the sixth verse. Un ievēro sesto pantu. These are wild animals. Šī ir mežonīgi zvēri. Symbolizing nation. Kas simbolizē nāciju. But there is a leader in these nations. Bet šajās nācijās ir arī līderis. After this I behold another like a leopard. 
Tad es redzēju vēl vienu zvēru, tas izskatījās pēc panteras. Which had upon its back four wings of a fowl. Bet tam bija četri putni spārni uz muguras. And the beast also had four heads. Šim zvēram bija arī četras galvas. And dominion was given to it. Tam tika piešķirta valdnieka vara. Well, this fourth leopard is Greece. Un šis, uh, šī pantera, tā ir Grieķija. It is the nation of Greeks. Tā ir Grieķija. The four wings are a symbol of how quickly he conquered the known world. The sixth verse says that beast had four heads. When Alexander the Great died, four generals took over Greece. You can just search history and find this out. Tu vienkārši vari paskatīties vēsturē un tu to atradīsi ieraudzīsi. Then there is the seventh verse. Un tad ir septītais pāns. And after this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast. Un pēc tam es redzēju nakts parādībā ceturto zvēru. Dreadful and terrible, strongly, exceedingly. Tas bija briesmīgs un bīstams un ārkārtīgi stiprs. And it had great iron teeth. Un tam bija lieli un varini dzels zobi. Iron teeth. Dzels zobi. Again, I told you the book of Revelation talks about these metals. But notice what he sees. It, this beast, it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the remaining of the feet of it, but with the feet of it. So you have to understand the fourth creature is talking about Rome. This is Rome. But I want you to notice what he's emphasizing. Rome was like great iron teeth. That's a strong mouth to bite with. Tā ir spēcīga mute, ar kuru kost. But notice what he emphasizes here. Bet ievēro, ko viņš šeit uzsver. And yet this beast devoured and broke in pieces. Tas aprīja un iznīcināja visu. And stamped the remaining with its feet. Un kas atlika, to tas samina ar kājām. Notice the feet. Ievēro, kājām. Well, on your feet. Zem kājām. It stamped with its feet. Samina ar kājām. And this beast was different from all the other beasts before it. Tas bija citādāks nekā visi pārējie zvēri. Now notice, and it had ten horns. Tam bija arī desmit ragi. You see that? Vai jūs to redzat? Notice the eighth verse. Ievērojas to to pantu. And I looked upon and considered the horns. Es aplūkoju uzmanīgi šos ragus. That is to say the ten horns. Tas ir tāds, tāpat kā teikt, šos desmit ragus. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. Un redzēju, ka to starpā parādījās vēl viens mazs raks. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Un trīs no tā agrākiem ragiem tika izlausti. And behold, in this horn has eyes like a, eyes of a man and mouth speaking great things. Un redzi, šim ragam bija acis kā cilvēka acis un mute, kas runāja lielas un pārgalvīgas lietas. Now, again, I just want to point this out to you. Es vēlreiz gribu vienkārši to uzsvērt. Whenever they symbolize a creature, uh, Reiz, kad tiek kāds there is some thing about that creature tad ir kaut kas par šo that talks about attributes of this kingdom. Kur tiek par šīs kaut kādām lietām. But in one sense, they're all personifications, because this is talking bet, about kingdoms and people. But no, vien, no vienas puses šīs ir per, personifikācijas, jo tu tiek, tur tiek runāts par uh, valstībām. Now, I want you to notice down here with me. Un es gribu, lai jūs ievērojat. Again in the seventh verse. And whenever they, the two candlesticks, the two olive trees, might finish their testimony, the beast, the one coming up out of the abyss, will make war with them. And will overcome them. And will kill them. No, do not jump to conclusions. Because these are symbols. Jo šie ir simboli. We have to find out mums ir jāuzzina, who and what this symbol represents. Ko šis simbols, nu, pārstāv, nozīmē. Can you understand that? Jūs to we have to understand this. Mums tas ir so first of all, I want you to go over with me. Un es gribu, lai jūs pirms 
Go over with me, if you will, to um, 1 John. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple new other New Testament epistles to read. 1 John, 2nd chapter. Notice this statement. This is where we get the name of this person. This is 1 John 2. Notice the 18th verse. Little children, Bērniņi, it is the last time. Ir and as you all have heard un kā jūs esat that Antichrist comes, ka nāk he comes. Viņš nāk. Do you see that? Vai jūs to redzat? They knew he was coming. Viņi zināja, ka viņš nāk. Even now there are many Antichrists. Tā jau tagad daudzi Antichristi. Do you see that? So there's two kind of terms there. There's one Antichrist, and then there are many Antichrists. Anyone who is against Jesus is functioning under the spirit of Antichrist. You understand that? But there is an Antichrist. Bet ir Antichrists. Do you see that? Vai jūs to redzat? We get that name from this book. Mēs šo vārdu ieraugam šajā vēstulē. Now, if you look down here again in 2 Thessalonians. Un ja tu paskaties otro Tesalona tiešiem. We'll see another description of this person. Tad mēs ieraudīsim vēl vienu šīs personas aprakstu. 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter. Otrā Tesalona tiešiem otrā nodaļa. Notice this statement. Third verse. Let no man deceive you by any means. For except the coming away or falling away shall take place. And the man of sin shall be revealed. Man of sin. Man of sin. It calls him a man. Number two, the son of perdition. Do you see them? That is to say, the son of destruction. The son of destruction. So he is a person who is being compared to destruction. Can you understand that? He is called the man of sin. If he is a man, then he is a human. And there are no humans that come out of hell. Can you understand that? There are no humans that come out of hell. So we have to say, now God, what is it you want us to understand about this beast that comes out of the abyss. Now, I want you to notice something else. Notice what else it says about him. Eighth verse. And then shall the wicked be revealed. It calls him a wicked one. Can you see that? So he is called a wicked person. Now the question is this. What do we know about this beast? So we're going to go through these right now, okay? We may not get through all of them. But notice with me first of all. It's the, again the seventh verse. And whenever they may or might finish their testimony, the beast, zvērs, the one coming up out of the abyss, will make war with them. Kas nāk ārā no bezdebeņa, sāks ar viņiem karu. And will overcome them viņš uzvarēs, and will kill them. Un viņus nokaus. If we just take the general information, ja mēs paņemam vienkārši to vispārējo informāciju, evil ļauns, and the abyss are the same. Ļauns, Un zvērs, tas ir viens un tas pats. There are only evil people down there. Tur lejā ir tikai slikts, there are only cilvēki. evil spirits down there. Tur lejā ir tikai ļaunie gari. There are no good people in the abyss. Bezdebinī nav labu cilvēku. So this is a beast tas ir zvērs, from hell. Kas nāk no elles. Now remember the other little thing that came out of hell? 
A star and a key was given to the star. A star is a personification because it was a, a person of some sort was given a key open the abyss and something came out right there were evil creatures that came out of the abyss we know that evil creatures came out they look like locusts Amen? Amen. So we know that this is a beast. We're not sure what this symbolizes yet. Now go over to the 13th chapter. 13th chapter. The 12th and the 13th chapter reveal the immediate time. And it says something about this beast. When this beast comes, we have to keep gathering information as we go, okay? The beast from the abyss. But we don't know what it means yet. The beast from the abyss. Now notice this. This is Revelation 13.1. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Notice he comes out of the sea. Now, can you have both? <laughs> you see, you have two conflicting statements. The beast out of the abyss. The beast out of the sea. See, you have to keep in every little piece and put it together at the end. The sea symbolizes Gentile nations. Jūra symbolizē pagānu nācijas. We know this. Mēs to zinām. Notice, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. Un es ieraudzīju no jūras izkāpjam zvēru. Having ten horns. Ar desmit ragiem. Daniel said the same thing. Daniels teica to pašu lietu. But he described those horns. Un viņš aprakstīja šos ragus. And he described another horn, right? Un viņš aprakstīja vēl vienu ragu. A little horn that came up after those ten. Viņš aprakstīja vēl mazu ragu, kas nāca pēc šiem desmit. But now there's an interesting fact about this beast. Un tagad ir kāds interesants fakts par šo zvēru. Remember this is a personification. Atceries, ka tā ir personifikācija. It is a symbol of a wild creature. This wild creature comes out of the Gentile nations. This creature has ten horns. This creature has seven heads. Seven heads. Seven heads. Seven heads. There is a reason for that. Seven is a God number. Can you understand that? God said to Israel, and you have to understand because of the amount of Hebrewisms, God said, I have delivered you from Egypt. I have taken you out of Egypt. If you, Israel, will not listen to me now, I shall punish you seven times more. Not eight, not ten, but only seven. God's judgment for Israel disobeying him is seven judgments. Okay? Just remember that. This beast has seven heads. You need to understand why. But we will look at it as we go, okay? There is a symbol ten. We saw Daniel said there was ten horns. This has ten horns and seven heads. Now the interesting thing here is that the seven heads no longer have the seven crowns. Notice who has the crowns. And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having ten horns and seven heads. And upon his horns and upon his head look at 
And I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads. And upon his horns, that is the ten, ten royal crowns. Notice the crowns. The crowns are on the ten. Do you see that? Now, just back up to the twelfth chapter. Notice the 12th chapter. This is a clue. It, it is necessary that I repeat myself because they're going to see it more if I repeat myself. Notice the 12th chapter. And another sign was seen in the heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and upon his heads seven royal crowns. Do you see that? When we see this dragon the dragon has seven heads. The dragon has ten horns and the seven heads do not have victory crowns but royal crowns. Royal crowns. This is a crown that a major, the top leader has. Jesus has one and the devil has one. There's only two kingdoms in the earth today. The devil wears a crown like this. It means supreme authority. The devil has supreme authority. Jesus has supreme authority. Now notice the crowns are on the seven. These two are the same. The sevens are the same and the ten are the same. What is it? I will explain it, but I'm running out of time. Okay. The seven refer to the seven punishments that God said he would strike Israel with. There will be only seven major world powers. Only seven. From the time Israel left Egypt, there was only prophesied seven punishments coming. Okay? If you take away Egypt, which would have been not included in this list, there has to be seven punishments. The first was Assyria. Assyria was the first world nation that persecuted Israel. The second was Babylon. Assyria took away the ten nations. Babylon took away the two nations. Two and ten is twelve. That means all of Israel. The ten northern tribes were taken away by Assyria. The two southern tribes were taken away by Babylon. After Babylon, Media and Persia persecuted Israel again. After Media Persia, Alexander the Great and the Greek Empire came. After Alexander came, Rome came. Now you notice there's five. And we're missing two. We're going to see those two. Who they are. Two that have not come yet. Can you understand that? Two after Rome. But you're going to see these are symbols. Again, go back to the 13th chapter. Notice this statement. There's a clue. 
tur ir Un es ieraudzīju no jūras izkāpjam zvēru. There is a wild creature. Tātad ir mežonīgs dzīvnieks. Coming up out of the Gentile nations. Kas nāk no pagāņu tautām. It has 10 horns. Tam ir 10 rāgi. It has 7 heads. Un 7 galvas. It doesn't have 5 heads. Viņam nav 5 galvas. It doesn't have 3 heads. Viņam nav 3 galvas. It has all 7. Viņam ir visas 7. So it is the 7th. Tātad tā ir 7. It is the 7th kingdom. Tātad tā ir tā 7. Um, nu it is the seventh world power that will persecute Israel. It is the seventh. Now you see it after Revelation 12. Revelation 12 showed the crowns on the seventh. But something happened in heaven. There was a war. And the devil and his angels were kicked out of heaven. They're out of the earth now. He could no longer fight from up there. So now he's down here. So he's going to transfer all of his power all of his authority to one man. And this one man is together with these ten. These ten and this man, Satan gives all of his power, all of his authority. You will see here now and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, and upon his horns ten royal crowns, and upon his heads names of blasphemy. Now I read Daniel for this point, I have to at least say this first, second verse. Remember in Daniel, a lion, a bear, a leopard un, uh, and a funny pantera. looking creature. Un tāds jocīgis, kad, uh, now, notice this. <laughs> un and the beast which I saw was similar to a leopard. Un zvērs, ko es ieraudzīju, bija līdzīgs leopardam. Looked like a leopard. Kā leopards. And his feet were like a bear. Un viņa kājas bija kā lācija. And his mouth was like a lion. Un viņa mute bija kā lauvas mute. Lion. Lauva. Bear. Lācis. Leopard. Leopards. This leopard symbolizes Greece. The bear symbolizes Media and Persia. And the lion symbolizes Babylon. But now, it's one creature. You may not know this, but if you go look at a map, Greece, Medo-Persia, and Babylon all stood on the same place in the world. They all stood the center of their kingdom stood right north of Israel. All three of those kingdoms. Now, this beast has three personality traits. He's got the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, but he's got the body of this leopard. So, this beast is a kingdom. It's describing kingdom attributes from Daniel. Can you understand that? He's describing attributes from Daniel. Daniel saw these wild creatures. 